Jacked cow returns. <laughs> what are these animals eating? Maybe the same thing as the, the Viking warriors. This is just too peaceful. Yep, there it is. Every time, there is no peace in anime. Oh, okay, this is... Ask Let's Land. Wow, this is actually going to be a peaceful episode? Homecoming? I mean, we already had that great Christmas vacation. Do we really need another one? That old man Gorm, am I right? <laughs> oh my god. I totally forgot about Thorfinn in the duel for a second. No levity, no fun at all. Christmas is coming late <laughs> for Thorfinn and maybe early for Aslad. It's so amazing how like all the craziness that's happened so far seems like not backstory. I mean, we're on the journey with Thorfinn, but I don't even know what to expect in terms of what it will be in its fullness. Is he going to be leading Aslad's crew? And he's got to figure something else out because this duel's going to happen once and then he's going to come face to face with everything he's been running from for all this time. He's fallen pretty far, but you know, just when you think you've hit bottom, you find out there's more. There's always more to fall. There's a lot of room on the downside, but luckily also on the upside. <laughs> November 1012 AD, village of feudal lord Gorm. Greedy Gorm, as they call him. I mean, honestly, I was thinking about this last time. This is an unbelievably good haul. And this village doesn't seem that, that different from Thorfinn's village. Even crazy Viking mercenaries have loving homes and families. It's all just the context, I guess. Aslet's got a fan club. What is he, the Avatar? <laughs> but I was serious. I'm just serious about girls. Oh no, how am I ever going to pay off this 121 coins? Oh yeah, this massive amount of French treasure that I stole. I wonder if they have code. Once I worked at a bar in, in K-Town, Koreatown in New York, it was actually a front for a massage parlor for money laundering purposes, but we were instructed by the madam to give different menus, one for locals and one for tourists. Turns out that in some cases that is a real thing, and then we made sure to just never do that. It's not like the accounting was real anyway. But about Gorm, it's just the fact that they're focusing on the money thing so much, he will either play a, a bigger role or will end the episode with nothing. Talk about confusing source for signal. I think money as a pursuit gets a really bad rap. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it's a really great tool. And it's also, it's an interesting pursuit. I've been listening a lot to, uh, there's a great podcast called How I Built This, which is people who built famous brands and companies talking about how they got their start. And you get the sense that a lot of them don't really need money anymore. They just enjoy the benefits it brings them to focus on something and, you know, the feeling of building things and creation, which I kind of get. But like with all good things, it's easy to fixate on a superficial symbol of that thing. You know, a false idol looking at the thing itself instead of what it means or the value it provides. What will happen to Gorm, I wonder? But what he's missing is that there's a much greater thrill to be had. There's a much greater addiction, raiding and pillaging. Tell me about it. <laughs> Ooh, it's weighing on him. It's in there. I'm curious to see where this is going. That's kind of so intriguing because it feels like he always has two channels. There's like the outside surface level, which is kind of cool and collected. But then there's the internal one that's processing things and thinking carefully. This is a big event, <laughs> to say the least. You have no idea. I can see this going so many number of ways. It's part of what makes it so thrilling. If I'm a, a, a wagering man, I'm going to say that Asklad doesn't die. That doesn't mean he won't lose. Yep, at this point he's definitely spent more time with Asklad than he has with his own family. Rushing in. I saw that sweat drop. More impressive is that he blocked that with daggers. 
Yeah, I mean, he's one of them at this point. Whoa, what is happening? Feels like they're rooting for Thorfinn out of love, but don't actually expect him to win. Oh! <gasps> no, he remembers, though. He would not forget it, Thor's. This is a tactic. This is that that channel again. He's getting in his head. For me, it was a Tuesday. And technically, a lot of arrows did, but. This is not how he feels, though. I'm guessing. And that's what he wanted. Drive into a rage. He just won psychologically. He beat him without a sword. And it's a teaching experience. It's a teaching moment. Who's your daddy now? Not letting him go totally unscathed. Oof. The humiliation. Oh no. <laughs> Nothing gets you worked up by surviving a revenge attempt. We'll be happy to know they've been sufficiently fattened up. Holy crap. In a way, I'm relieved by the outcome of that because I I feel like I, I need to see more of Asklad. It would have been a waste to have him go out at this point in the show. The more I watch him, the more interesting he becomes. The more layered his, his whole being seems. And also, while it would have been really intriguing and crazy to have seen what would have happened if Thorfinn won, this is also satisfying. Because then the question is, does he just double down on it? Or does he actually start to come around, which is bizarre to conceptualize, but also feels intuitively right in a sense. You know, who is he at this point? I mean, in terms of his, his life, his disposition, his outlook, his behavior, his activities, and just the time spent, He's more Asklad's son than he is Thor's. It feels like it ceased to be about revenge for Thor's long ago. That's kind of just the emblem he's put on his journey to keep him alive, keep him going. It's taken a more amorphous form of just rage at the world. And if he just can take a step back for a second, even though it's crazy and hard to imagine, he might find himself loving the life that he has or enjoying aspects of it that he's been sort of keeping himself guarded from. It's a really interesting and complex dynamic, this whole thing. All he's missing is a vision of something else. And if I'm as glad, that's my next step, is aligning him with something that I'm aligned with. That's how enemies become friends. A lot of aims and a lot of struggles end up being very different in name, but exactly the same or similar in spirit. And they already have so much common ground in terms of their internal mechanisms. You know, they're both dealing with a world that's just insane, violent, dog eat dog, that values the glory of battle and warriors above everything else, and trying to rise to the top of that world. And that's just true in general. You know, you look at people who are bitter enemies, they're not that different, typically. If they're engaging in the same things, if they're on the same battlefield, then they're more similar than they realize. Maybe they could align themselves over some mutton with herbs. And <laughs> drinking with horns. <laughs> drinking out of horns. They still got the ship. I didn't realize that. Man, he's in a hole. I want to be on your boat. He's got a really good read on him. Yeah, actually, that makes a lot of sense, come to think of it. Because part of the whole narrative that he has about the, the events that happened in episode 3 and 4 was that he's fighting injustice. He's fighting against Asclad, who was the person who broke his word and resorted to underhanded tactics to defeat his father. Which is not wrong, that whole situation was shady. But he's using that as a justification a little bit more than it actually exists as his motivation. His motivation is just revenge, like fury and rage at his whole world coming apart. But he's doing all these terrible things, it seems to me like he might try to frame it that way, that it's about righteousness, it's about justice. So it's one of those things that can be right and wrong at the, at the same time. I mean, there was an injustice there, in my opinion at least, but I don't think it's really justice motivating Thorfinn. But he will need to tell himself that as sort of a, a catch-all or a way to write himself a, a blank check to just commit these horrendous acts that he deep down knows are, are terrible. Damn it, Horda! <laughs> I feel like they're drawing, they're, there's going to be something with her in Asclad. She's being very prominently featured. I feel like we're about to get a good look into Asclad's philosophy. 
金で買った奴隷に主人ずらしてやがんのおおわお自覚がないだけなのさ人間はみんな Where have we heard this before? Okay, Kenny. All men are slaves to something. In the times that I heard that in season three of Attack on Titan, it's come to mean a lot more to me. I think it's right. And I think it's right by just fact and necessity. By taking any action at all, there is something underneath there that's driving you. Even if what you're doing is not really connected to that, even if it's not clear what that thing is, there's got to be something to drive any action. And it doesn't have to be just one thing. You know, it's probably a, a bunch of things that kind of all form around something very core, which is just. Desire for human things. I think what's so key about this idea though is that if it's true that everyone has that, if it's true that everybody has these sort of underlying schema that trickle out and are responsible for basically everything everyone does all the time, the question is, what are those things? And they're definitely not all created equal. People will tell you that life has no meaning, but really what that means is they've ceased trying to understand what it is that guides them, and they're maybe afraid to decide what they would like to have guide them. Because probably if you were to think, what do I want driving me? It would immediately Shine a light on the fact that you're not living up to your own responsibility and your own standards if you had the stomach to make them. But that's kind of a tragedy because what that means is you're you're being guided by something that's not you, or it's more layers removed from you and what you actually are. I think maybe one way of defining a heroic path, let's call it, for lack of a better word, or just a satisfying path towards an arc is to be getting closer and closer to having the things guide you that actually matter. And maybe simultaneously getting more and more in touch with that process and being more in command of it. I mean, just to be fair, I know that when people say life is no meaning, what they're talking about is sort of an objective meaning and that meaning is just subjective, but I think that also is wrong. Or that is to say, it's not totally subjective. There are parameters on what will move you closer or Farther away from what actually is fulfilling on a on a deep individual level, but also at a sustainable level across people and across societies. And we kind of already know to a certain degree what they are because they've been handed to us by generations and generations of hard fought knowledge of humans living on the planet, dealing with roughly the same DNA and roughly the same challenges. Yet it's not enough to know it in abstraction. It kind of has to be understood at a deeper level of resonance, if that makes sense. And that's part of the journey, I think. That's part of what experience teaches. This is obviously related to Thorfinn. It's no accident that it's happening this episode because Thorfinn is a slave to things that he can't even look at yet. He can't see it, just like Gorm and money. But now I'm wondering, what is what is Asklad drunk on? What is Asklad going for exactly? Because no matter how above it he seems to be on the surface, he, by his own admission, is aiming at something. Just me sulking in my dad's boat. <laughs> you get there, huh? <gasps> oh my god, he is Mufasa. He is a Mufasa dad. <laughs> this is him returning. He, he went backwards a little bit to go back to the source because he kind of strayed from it a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I was saying something about that. You just let them make their own mistakes. Yeah, that's also fitting that Aslan beat him with that one. This was an unexpected meeting, but I can see this being exactly what Thorfinn needs right now. Just another human being, some warmth, any kind of understanding. Unusually kind from Gorm. Was it actually Gorm? Or was it Asklad? I think Asklad has established that we all are. <laughs> I get that vibe as well. Asklad's speech was so, so perfectly timed for this whole thing. Who's the real slave? There's Finland. We know that saying, wherever you go, there you are. There it is. <laughs> it's hope. It's a dream of a different life. And a transition. But a transition to what? Where do we stand now? That was such a great scene. I see. Had that little break, now war resumes. 
What about Thorfinn? The king himself joins the invasion. Okay. Okay.してくぬとは、あやつは来ておるな。See the guy we just saw? Yeah, there he is. I bet he's going to be the guy with the mask in the intro. Alright, so he's going to be the guy with the mask in the intro. Okay, you're about to get chained. I don't know what this guy's about, but I don't know. I'm a sucker for that kind of leadership. Huh. This is going to be an interesting character. I can already feel it. A prince eager to prove himself. Londinium. Is it London? Oh no, I feel like the episode is about to end. I feel like it's going to cut off. That was amazing. Wow, and it keeps going. Wait, is it the guy that Thoris was fighting side by side with in the first episode? What's he doing over there? I mean, a lot of them are mercenaries, right? So that episode, despite being sort of the, the calm before the storm, was really gripping. I'm curious to learn more about the king and the prince, what role they're going to play. Curious also to know what Thorfinn's role will be. As I mentioned, I love the fact that the leaders in the show actually fight in battle. There's something not really practical about that, especially now, but has something I feel is so often lacking, which is skin in the game. You know, a whole bunch of people making decisions for other people, but you don't have actual literal boots on the ground so you're not gonna have the whole picture and so there's a weird hazard that forms there just in general you know i'm not talking about battle just in life it's really easy to make decisions for people when you have no connection to it and will suffer none of the effects the negative effects but i think the most notable part of the episode was Asklad sort of nailing down one of the themes of the episode and maybe the the show at large i mean thorfinn is not free he might tell himself he is and he, you know he might look to characteristic characteristics of his life you know he's sailing around the world and he eats where he wants but that dude is not free yeah but maybe somewhere out there you know across the sea is something different something that allows you to get out of this life but can he escape from the actual enemy which is the one he's battling on a daily basis in his own heart